Hi, everyone, and welcome to the sixth and final week in our series entitled Not Okay. My name is Steve Robinson, and I serve as the pastor of Church of the King. Today, I want to talk to you about another important pattern and habit I see in the scripture that is central to us living a healthy and productive life, and that is biblical friendship. As we look into the Word of God, we see one of the most important ways to live a healthy and thriving life, and that is to cultivate and maintain godly friendships. Everyone is in favor of having friends. Let me say this, at least theoretically. People sing songs about it. They write poems about it. There's even a city in the United States named after it, Philadelphia, a city of brotherly love. We love stories about friendship, especially when it involves loyalty under pressure. And often, movies which on the surface are about something else, maybe war, sports, or adventure, really turn out to be about friendship. So many Marvel movies, such as The Avengers and Captain of America, uh, they all come back to friendships, and even unlikely friendships. There's something in the heart of all of us that yearns for friendship. Why is that? Well, I'll tell you why. God has put into the human heart the desire to know and to be known, to love and to be loved. One of the most watched sitcoms in the history of television, you guys know exactly what I'm talking about, is what? Say it. Cheers. And it had a theme song which said this. And this really encapsulates this whole concept. Think about it. Sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your what? Say it. Name. And they're always glad you what? Say it. Came. You want to be where you can see our troubles are all the, come on, say it. Same. You want to be where everybody knows your name. Something about being known and knowing. Every one of us desire that. It's a God-given instinct. It's really a God-given desire. And one of the things I can truly say is that I have been blessed with some true godly friends in my life. Men that have loved me, have cared for me, encouraged me, discipled me, inspired me, and yes, confronted me, and even corrected me. And the list goes on and on. Some of my closest friends in the whole world are, are, are the ones that I work with every day. You know, there's this old school thought of when you lead an organization, it says that, well, you shouldn't get close to the people that are on your team. You guys ever heard that before? Maybe in leadership or business literature, you don't get close to those that you work with. Stay distant, stay aloof, stay detached. And then you emerge from the office or you emerge from the, you know, from the clouds and you descend down from the mountain and deliver the word. The problem with that school of thought is that it's, well, it's not biblical. It's definitely not healthy. That's not how Jesus lived. He hung out with his disciples. In other words, he was known and he knew. It's not how the apostle Paul lived either. He hung with the guys he worked with. The issue is it takes a tremendous amount of effort and energy to cultivate godly friendships. Now, what I have found is that godly men have saved me from some of the most foolish decisions. They've encouraged me when I've needed it most, and they've helped me when I needed it most. I believe it's critical for all of us to have biblical friendships that help us to become everything that God created us to be. There's no other way. Now, I want to look at one of the best passages in Scripture that I believe demonstrates the power and the benefits of friendship. You can follow along in your book. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9 through 12, here's what it says. Two are better than one because they have good reward for their labor. For if they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. Again, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one be warm alone? Though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. When we read these words of Solomon, we tend to think in terms of marriage. And there's certainly 
is application there. Absolutely. But I believe the author had much more of a wider application than just the marriage context. This is really for all people. See, God created us and knows what's best for us, and that is to be in godly relationships and the strength of those godly relationships. See, the writer of Ecclesiastes wants us to understand that friendship is a good investment. See, verse 9 says this, two are better than one because they have good reward for their labor. The words good reward can also be translated good return, for it means dividends paid on a wise investment. The very best investment that you will ever make in life will not be a financial one, but rather the investment made in relationships. See, we will get the best return on that investment over any other investment that we'll ever make. That's how powerful relationships are. Now, let's focus in on three characteristics of biblical friendships. You guys ready? Let's look at our books and follow along. Number one, here we go. A real friend helps you when you're down. Verse 10 says, For if they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. Now, you may have a lot of people in your life you could call acquaintances, but you may only have a few you could term real friends. Someone has suggested that we have been successful in life if we have enough close friends to act as pallbearers at our funeral. Listen, that seems like a pretty low standard to shoot for. I believe that God has called us to greater relationship capacity than just that. A friend is the kind of person, if you call them at 2 a.m. in the morning and tell them that you need them, they don't ask, so what's the problem? And then decide whether or not to come. They simply ask, where are you? as they're getting dressed. That's a friend. Now, how many people do you have like that in your life? See, the writer of Proverbs in chapter 17, verse 17 says this, a friend loves at all times and a brother is born for adversity. So number one, we have to understand there's power in friendship. There's power to help you. Number two, watch this. A real friend is someone who will protect you. Verse 12 says this, Though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him. These words were written based on the military strategy of the ancient world. Almost all combat was hand-to-hand -hand combat in the ancient world. Soldiers went into battle with a partner, someone that could be counted and trusted on implicitly, and they stood back to back. The soldiers would stand back to back and they always kept their backs in contact and fought whatever enemy came from any side. See, friends, they guard your back no matter how intense life may get. If you assessed your relationships based upon this principle, how would you rate your relationships right now? See, I believe that God wants to give you friends that will not only help you, but they'll fight and protect you. Let me give you number three. A real friend is committed to helping you grow spiritually. Look at verse 12. Here's what it says. A threefold cord is not easily broken. If you've ever seen a threefold cord, you understand it's designed for strength. I mean, it's real hard to break. And that helps us to understand what godly friendships are all about. When two people are in a friendship, and a third party, namely, watch this, God is involved, man, it's a strong friendship. And that's why we're talking about biblical friendship, because God is at the center, and it makes us stronger, stronger than we can be by ourselves, stronger than any relationship without God. God in the middle, I'm telling you, that's the threefold core. You, your friend, and God. Proverbs 27, 17 says this, as iron sharpens iron, a friend sharpens a friend. You see, true friends want to see us continue to grow emotionally, professionally, and spiritually. True friends do that. Now, some of you are in your small group because a real friend, a true friend, invited you. They love you. They care for you. You may even think that your friend is a, a little bit on the passionate side when it comes to God because they keep talking about God. Well, I want to tell you that they're a true friend. 
because they are letting you know of the greatest gift anyone could ever receive. And that is a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. You know, as we're ending up our small group time, and of course, I know you guys can have a great discussion. And by the way, I hope you guys stay together. I thought it would be appropriate, just like I began the first small group. I think it's appropriate to end my time with you guys by giving you an opportunity to receive Christ. Let me tell you this. Jesus Christ can be your best friend if you open your heart to him. Would you just bow your heads right now where you are? I don't want to embarrass anybody, but just right where you are, we're going to just pray a little prayer, all right? I'm not going to ask anybody to stand. I'm not going to ask anybody to raise their hand. But I believe that God has brought you here and God has had you in this group and the Holy Spirit has bonded you with some great relationships. And and it's a moment now. It's a moment now for you to open your heart to the one who loves you most, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for you. Would you pray with me? Say, dear Jesus, come on, just repeat after me. Say, dear Jesus, I come to you today a sinner in need of a Savior. Say this, say, Jesus, thank you for dying for me. Wash me with your blood. Give me a new heart, a new life, a new reason to live. Amen. If you prayed that prayer just now for the very first time and you meant business with God, here's what I'm going to ask you to do. I'm going to ask you to talk to either one of your friends that brought you to the small group or maybe to your host and and let them know what it means that you that you just trusted Christ as your savior. It's also an honor and a privilege for us. If you don't have a home church, man, we we'd love to be a church for you to to encourage you at Church of the King. Now, I know you guys are going to have a great time together in your discussion about biblical friendship. Can I just encourage you? Please stay with your group. Many groups are going to be doing different topics afterwards. Some of you are going to be doing financial peace. There's lots of different curriculums to choose from. Most of all, keep Jesus number one and keep connected to other believers. God bless you guys. It's been an honor to spend this time with you. We'll see you.